Hey guys, it's Julian, and today I'm super excited to be showing you how to make warped organic drums in the style of Bonobo. The vibe I was going for here was kind of like tracks like Kerala or like his more recent stuff that's more organic and kind of like based in using a bunch of different cool sounds. So as usual, you can get the project file and samples from this video in the description, and let's dive in. So the first sound I have here is this little keys sound, which sounds like this. So what this is, is it's a recording of me jingling some keys together, kind of like this. And you can hear my keys are a little bit hefty. <laughs> They're kind of, it's kind of like big. So when you hit them together, they make this cool kind of like clicky sound. And it's not like the usual kind of like keys jingling type of sound, I guess. And so what I did was I just kind of took this. And you can see I chopped it rhythmically, and then I just put it in here as like part of the beat. So here's the original sample. So you can hear there were like a lot of those little clicks, and then like I said, I just kind of took this one and just copied it over a bunch of times. And then the way that I chopped it was again, I just put it in the arrangement, kind of like, kind of like this, like I just had the sample, and then I just took it, found the part that I wanted, and then I just copied it over a bunch of times. Like it's not too difficult, but I really recommend recording percussion like this. There are a lot of different reasons why. I mean, for one, using organic sounds is the best way to really get, like, an organic sound. Um, but another good thing about this is you get, like, really interesting kind of, like, textural percussion because what happens is the percussion... Okay, like, if you just put three random samples together in a drum rack and just keep triggering them over and over in a sequence of 16 notes or whatever kind of mini sequence you can think of, they're not really going to sound like they're connected. Like, they're not going to sound like it's the same sound being played with different timbres and different textures and different feels. And so you're not really going to get that much of an organic feeling. You're just going to get the sound of three samples being played over and over. With this, because it's like the same thing, but it's kind of just like randomly, I mean, for one, it's randomly generated because I'm just kind of randomly shaking the keys around. But for two, it is like, yeah, it's like kind of connected, you know? Like you hear a few hits in here. It's not just that one that's playing on the upbeat. But they all sound like they're coming from the same thing. And this is how you get that really organic sound. So I then we recommend just get started like shaking things, recording different sounds, hitting things together, all that kind of stuff. It's such a good way to make this kind of percussion. So then for effects on there, I've just got a little bit of echo and then I've got an EQ8 on here. Pretty simple, just kind of giving it a little bit of like an analog feel. Uh, Bonobo does this a lot on his percussion, uses these kind of like quick echoes. And then the EQ8 is just cutting out the low end. So then the next layer we have here is the second layer of keys jingling recording thing, which sounds like this. So the way I made this one was very similar. I took this recording. And except this time what I did was I grabbed actually two parts of it. So we have like this one and then this one. And you can hear they're slightly different. And what this does is it kind of just gives the beat a little bit of a more interesting feel because what happens is you get this one kind of going all the way through, just doing the same thing, but then you're getting like a little bit of a, a change on that second time with this second layer. So you can hear like they kind of play off of each other pretty nicely. So this is really similar. I just took the keys and just shook them, and yeah, this is how I ended up with the sound. And then one thing I did on this one was I pitched it down um, a lot actually, minus 10. Because it was just very similar sonically to this first layer. Like, if I just play these two without any pitching, you'll hear, like, it gets a little bit jumbled up. But having that pitch down, it, like I said, changes it a little bit, and it just gives it a little bit of a more interesting feel. Like, we get kind of two different things now. Um, so then for effects on there, all I've got is I've got an EQ8 cutting out the low end, similar to that first layer. And then I've got a compressor side-chaining this to the kick. So... You can see I sidechained this, I didn't sidechain the other keys layer, and then I sidechained something else in here, I believe. Um, but that's another thing I'll say is with this kind of stuff, especially if you want like that really like organic, like breathing kind of like bonobo sound where everything has a lot of space, try like selectively sidechaining. And what I mean by this is like only sidechain a few different things in your mix. Like in this case, for example, I sidechained this, and I believe I also sidechained this. But then this one is not sidechained. So you're not just only hearing all the percussion getting ducked out of the way by the kick. You're hearing some of it. So it just sounds like 
Like, it just kind of makes it part of the rhythm of those elements as opposed to being like, oh, there's a very strong side chain going on, if that makes any sense. So then the next layer we have here is this little quick thing. It sounds like this. It's that little thing you hear at the end of the bar. The way that I made this sound was by recording myself actually hitting some candles together. I'm trying to find the exact spot where it gets that kind of sound. But yeah, I basically just took that. Didn't really do too much to it, um, but similar to the keys, I just kind of took this long audio file in here. I guess it was only those two hits. But I just kind of took it in here and just did like this. Like just took a little part of it. And there we go. And then I think I moved it over a little bit. Like it's really not too difficult to make these. Um, again, very similar to the other stuff. You just kind of get started hitting things together and shaking things. You'll probably find some cool percussion. Um, but yeah, so then the next layer that we have here is this rim shot, which sounds like this. The way that I made this was actually by recording an, like a snare drum, like an actual snare drum from a drum kit. Um, if you don't know, a rim shot is kind of like when you hit like the side of the snare, I guess, or like when you kind of like hit the rim. It's hard to explain. But this is that sound you always hear. If you don't know what a rim shot is, this is that sound you always hear in like Burial's music, Bonobo's music. Like a ton of people in this style use these kind of sounds. And so I wanted to kind of show you the process of taking one like from a recording, like a raw recording, to like making it fit into one of these tracks. So the rim shot that I started with sounded like this. So that's kind of what it sounds like on a drum kit. You may be more familiar with that sound. And what I did was, first I brought it into the simpler, and then I, what I did was I pitched it up, and then I gave it a bit of an amplitude envelope, like I kind of shaped it with the decay here. Because you can hear there's a little bit of stuff like ringing out in that. And we really don't want that. Like we want like a tight, like kind of crackier hit here. So yeah, I just wanted to get rid of that. So I put an envelope on it, like I said, pitched it up a little bit to kind of make it a little bit brighter. And then I put this EQ8 on here. And then with the EQ8, I cut out all the low end because sometimes with these recordings, there can be a bit of low end. And then I also cut out this little point here. And the reason for that is because if you listen to it without that, and if you look at the frequency spectrum as well, you can see there's like a weird bump there. So I was just getting rid of that. And yeah, like that's the kind of stuff you want to do when you're working with live recordings like this. Like just kind of knowing how to go through with EQ and like clean them up can really help. Like you can hear this goes from kind of like, like that would work, I guess, but it doesn't really sound that good. It goes from that to this, which works pretty well. And then the only other thing that I, was sh that I really need to show you with this one is this little thing here. I added that little 16th note. That's kind of something I hear Bonobo do a lot. Um, yeah, just adding little kind of like accent fill things like that in there, I guess. It really helps to kind of bring your track to life. Like, it really helps to have that kind of stuff because it makes it more, like, it just makes it more interesting. You know, it sounds like it's being played live because when you play something live, you would add in a lot of fills. You wouldn't just play the same thing the whole time. So, yeah, so then the next thing that we have here is this kick, which sounds like this. So this kick is just like a little short kick. I actually made it with Operator. Um, it's very easy to synthesize kicks, especially these kind of like basic kicks. Um, so basically the way that I made this was by using sine waves. So we've got this first sine wave. You can see I turned the decay down a bit and just kind of shaped it. And then I added the second one here. And you can see the second one is also up quite a bit in pitch. And we had the envelope set like that. And basically what this is doing, I'll explain more when I show you kind of like this other thing over here. But this is basically just adding more of like a transient to the sound. You can hear that's what's adding like that click at the start. So yeah, so then after that, I've got this pitch envelope. And this is really where most of the sound happens. So here's what it sounds like without the pitch envelope. And then with. So the pitch envelope is just very similar to an amp envelope, if you don't know. Um, it's just taking, it's just starting at a high pitch and dropping down to a lower one. And if you do a really fast one the way I did here with a really short decay, you can make it sound kind of like a click at the start of like a kick or like, you know, like kind of the impact. So yeah, so that was how I made that. It's really simple. It's just like a nice kind of like small kick. Again, like for these kind of kicks, synthesizing them really isn't too hard. And I kind of wanted to just try making everything in this project file myself. So that was how I made that. Um, so then the next thing we have here is a synth hi-hat, which sounds like this. 
This was also made with operator. It's also really easy to make hi-hats with a synthesizer. The way I did it was just some white noise. You can see I shaped it like that with the envelope. And then I put that into a band pass. And as you can see, that's really all you have to do to get kind of like a cool synthy hi-hat. So this is really just adding to the groove. Like it's kind of just doubling up that eighth note feel that the other percussion has because like just the keys on their own. Didn't quite punch through enough. It gives a nice vibe and it gives nice texture to the sound, but we need something on top of that. To kind of like make your head bob on those eighth notes or on the upbeats, if that makes any sense. So that's what this does. And the cool thing about doing this with a synth is that you just can really control like how it sounds, really make it sound however you want. So that's why I like doing this so much, because when you're trying to make something like I was in this case, that just fits into the overall beat, as opposed to like making a hi-hat, just to make a hi-hat, I guess you would probably do. Um, yeah, it's really good, like, you can just quickly dial it in and all that. So, the key here is really just the frequency on the bandpass filter and then the resonance. Like, the resonance kind of makes it more metallic sounding. And then the frequency is sort of like the timbre of the hi-hat. So, yeah, so that is that. And then the last thing we have here is the shaker, which sounds like this. So the way I recorded the shaker was by recording, actually, like, a thing of breadcrumbs. So, I actually have this over here. It was this beautiful thing. Uh, this is what it sounds like. So you can kind of hear, like, yeah, it's really a cool way to make a shaker. Um, if you have anything like breadcrumbs, a box of goldfish, a box of, like, cereal, like, anything like that that has stuff in it, you can make a shaker out of. You can, like, put some rocks in a can or something. I don't know, like. There's just a lot of interesting ways to create these sounds, you know? And so this is how I did this, just making, taking this breadcrumb shaker. And then similar to the others, I just chopped a piece out of that original recording I made. Um, it's really simple, but the shaker here, I feel like, really helps, like, the flow of the beat. Like, if you listen to it without it, it works. But then that shaker really gives it, like, a little bit more groove. So then, as far as effects go on the sound, all I have is I have an EQ8 cutting out the low end. Uh, pretty simple there. And then I just have a compressor side chaining it to the kick. Like I said, just, like, the selective side chaining thing. This is side chain. This other loop of keys is side chain. And then the top loop of keys is not. So we get kind of a cool groove this way. So that's pretty much it for this one. I just want to show you guys some techniques of how you can, like, really like make it all from scratch like all the sounds in here are sounds that i recorded or synthesized and it wasn't that difficult like i really just kind of played around with some sounds and this is what i ended up with so the reason why i'm saying all this is because yeah you should definitely try this as well like i think you guys could probably come up with some really cool stuff this way and yeah so that's gonna be it for today guys make sure to let me know what you think of this video in the comments and make sure to like this video as well as subscribe Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Um, you get the project file and samples from this video in the description. And yeah, I will see you guys again tomorrow with another tutorial.